What's up, brother? What's up, brother? <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday. <laughs> Special teams, special plays, special players. Wow. Okay, Graham. the fact that Graham wow. knows this, and you know this. Uh, yeah. I was tested yesterday. Someone referenced this to me and said, What's up, brother? And I was like, <laughs> What's up, brother? What the fuck are you talking about? And yes, I know nothing about memes or pole culture, but that makes me feel really dumb that even Graham is like on top of this shit. Seen it everywhere. Seen it everywhere. I've never back. seen it. Graham's Tuesday, Tuesday, it. Tuesday. Special players, special teams. <laughs> yeah, incredible. That's okay, awesome. So. Uh, well, welcome cool. back, Graham. Actually, I'm surprised you know because you've been away this whole time, living the, uh, you know, what is it? Jet setting life. Jet setting He's been life. with his new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I'm not. I'm not hurt. I have to be careful because I'm starting to like buy things that he has, and we're starting to look like each other. Like oh, when yeah. you and I used well, to show up wearing me, the same things. Me, he got me an Apple Watch. And then he's like, I'm like, I need a new pair of shoes. He's like, you got to try these shoes. Oh, and I'm yeah. thinking to myself, if I put those shoes on, this watch, I'm basically going to be him. Yep. So I got to be careful. I've been through this. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm on the way out. Yeah. <laughs> he bought me this chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still have shirts that he bought. He started yeah, like, sloppy he's, seconds. He started like, yeah. mi- he started like minions. <laughs> yeah. I don't know whether to be jealous or sad for you. <laughs> I'm I'm conscious of it, so that's a good thing. I'm a little hurt. Yeah. Uh, all right. So <laughs> yeah, tell us about it. What do you want to just give us a little recap of your trip? You were going to all the pickable facilities, and do you want to tell, tell us about which ones you liked? Yeah, we. I mean, Travis knows. We went to six states or five city, five states, six cities, thirteen indoor pickleball facilities yeah. all across, kind of like southeast, not really the country. Okay. Um, you know, everyone was extremely nice to us. That's the first thing I want to say, like accommodating, gave up all their info, talked about their clubs, you know, it was great research, really helpful. I would say the one I loved the most was Rally Pickleball Club. Yeah. Just because I'm really into interior design and that was more of a social club than it was a pickleball club. And so for me, that really hit it. But I also liked Aces because Rachel was there, Nate Matthews, shout out to those guys. Uh, Mike Betancourt, so a lot of familiar faces, but a really good club as well. Mm-hmm. There's so many good facilities now. I mean, yeah. no, it's all, everyone's different. Everyone's got their own special take. I think Chicken and Pickle probably has it down the best. Yeah. It's the probably the smoothest run business and probably cashing in the most. And do you think that they have the best player experience too? You know, a Chicken and Pickle has figured out that you know, the clubs that are going for player experience aren't the ones that maybe are doing the financially the best. Okay. It's the ones that are catering, like we've always said this, like top golf that are more social. So mm-hmm. they're not really looking for good players. They actually right. don't want good players. Right. One of the clubs even said to us, if they have, we don't even let them bring in large bags. Like, you know how our bags are like big paddle bags? Yeah. If you have that bag, you can't come in their club. What? Yeah. So, really? Yeah. Cause they don't want that energy. They want like the, I play once a month or once a year energy. I'm here to drink and eat and blast balls in the ceiling and, you know, and hit my partner. Oh. I'm not here to be like some competitive, serious pickleball player. Wow. That's wild. Wild, right? Yeah. Yeah. Are you so, shocked that you're into interior design? <laughs> my whole life. Wow. Big time. That makes sense. Yeah. Why does that make sense? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I just said it because I still don't, I, I've never heard that before. Yeah. Okay. It's actually one of my favorite pastimes. Okay. What's your, like, what style? My aesthetic? Yeah. These days, I'm really into kind of like that boho chic look. I know it's getting played out, but... You're gonna, I don't even know what that is, so you're going to have to <laughs> tell me what boho chic is. It's, bo- you know what, like, bohemian is? Like, yeah. um, okay, so it's bohemian. Only Bahama? No, that's more kind of a tropical aesthetic. No, bohemian is kind of like... It's got a lot of patterns, a lot of bright colors. Okay. You know, it's like pattern on top of pattern on top of pattern. And uh, so it's almost like hippie-ish, I would say. And then Chic would be taking that and making it classy where somebody who's really wealthy and not truly a bohemian would love it. Okay. So gonna, I'll look into the boho Chic. Oh, it's a, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful aesthetic. Okay. You know yeah. what that is? I do. I do know yeah, what yeah. it is. You guys are very cultured. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's guys probably know about my... Tuesday, Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. You know about Bohemian Chic. Yeah, I, know about enough, I know about pickleball, guys. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Other yeah, that's that's way, let's wait on that one. Yeah. Uh, so, um, but actually just continuing on the facility thing, it was just announced that um, Utah is getting a new facility and it's claimed... Did you see that? I didn't, but I saw it in your notes, so I'm curious to hear it. 
Go ahead. You they should, put you... out renderings of an indoor facility that's for the Utah Black Diamonds. It's enormous. It has a huge stadium seating indoors. Wow. But this is the part that bothered me is... I said it's the first home. The first home of an MLP team, which... is not true. More misinformation coming out of Utah. I don't know what's up with, with that area. But I'm pretty sure there's already a club or two. Like, didn't we go to the Columbus, home of the Columbus bus? The sliders, don't they have a home court? No, I just think that like the guy who was an owner of the bus was an owner of that club. Oh, okay. But I don't think they were like intertwined yet. But there's several clubs coming out before theirs, including ours, which is home of the Florida Smash. So they yeah. are not the they're not gonna be the first club that's home of an MLP team. They'll probably be the third or fourth. But it looks like a very nice facility. They're, it's, I think yeah. it's a, was it a twenty-five million dollar project? It was insane. They've got like plunge pools and stuff. Slated, like, yeah, slated for mm -hmm. summer of twenty twenty-five. Yeah. I mean, they might have just not known, you know, like it's not our club is open yet and we haven't declared it as home of the Florida Yeah, but Smash. then don't declare it. If you don't know, then don't declare it. Well, briefly on the um, Utah stuff. So we had a first trade of the premier season. Crazy. Uh, Loom, wait, who was it? Jay de Villiers traded for Tyson. Yeah, Jay trade. for Tyson. Uh, the word is that it was 50 grand plus the trade. So Utah... Cleared 50 G's with it. They paid to get rid of Tyson? Yeah, so Orlando okay. sent $50,000 and Tyson to Utah. For Utah to... T sorry, sorry. No, the other way. The other yeah. way. Yes. Right, right, right. 50,000 and Jay DeVillier like, to Utah. And I actually Utah. said this right away, like in a post, and Jay texted me instantly, like, ouch, you're hurting me here. Because I said, you know, on paper, Tyson's much more valuable than Jay. And, you know, whether, whether they perform differently, who knows? But um, I think if you were going to have one player at the moment, you take Tyson over Jay. But Jay has shown a lot of uh, Where's Tyson results. been lately? Still getting over an injury? Yeah, he's an like injury. What uh, is the injury? It's his foot thing again, I guess. Like a plantar fasciitis? Yeah, something like that. Something was his heel or his... Interesting. But yeah, anyway, so we'll see. I mean, it's a weird trade. It, it shocked me. Um, but did it? We talked about how those two aren't going to get along, so why are they on the yeah, same yeah. team? Well, but that's a I drafting that's, issue. Like, weird to do it to begin with. Do you know if Utah paid any extra money to get their players, or did they stay under the $500,000 MLP? Way under. Oh, way under? Yeah, as far as I know, way under. Mm. So, like, he's, he's clearing cash with it. That's interesting. That's mm -hmm. an interesting technique. Yep. I read somewhere, someone did the tally, it raised, like, over $5 million or something. Five mm. and a half million, that draft. Crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Does that mean that uh, MLP is in... A good spot now with all that cash that they've just got. Yes, for this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, I think I think for at least the next two years they're they're good. We oh we raised enough money for the next two years, but we have to recoup that money back, and this is part of the recoup. And right. uh, we recouped what our goal was for this year, at least close to it. Yes. Mm. Interesting. Uh, you think that any trades will happen in the challenger division before? I don't uh, think before we play. No. Will there be any more trades before we play? I don't think so. Okay. I think you're going to go through the first event and then, yeah. as always, you're going to have, you know, 30 calls. I'm going to predict one more. Okay. Yeah. Between the two. And who you, who's your prediction? And I can't predict that. Yeah, that's tough. I think it's Male gonna, or female? It's going to be a female. And it's going to be like, they're going to have a practice session. And like, yeah, this isn't going to work. And there's going to be a trade. Mm. Oh, I see. That's possible. Yeah, that could, yeah. It could happen. Um, all right. Well, let's do a little bit of a recap on Houston. Um, let's start with let's start with your your games, Travis. You want to give us a, a rundown of your stuff, and then we can talk about sure. some other players. So the the singles day was kind of funny. Uh, I have a buy. Matches start at ten. So in my mind, I'm like, oh, I'll get there like ten twenty. I don't really care much about singles, to be honest. So I just I just want to get some reps. My hotel is about 25 minutes away. 10, 21 rolls around. You've been assigned to court 14. And I'm like, I'm fucking seven minutes away. So I felt bad because I was playing a guy named Naveen Beasley and I was 20 minutes late, had to get there, get my paddles tested. And I was negligent to say the least. I don't know how he won that fast and was on right away, but he was. So I beat Naveen uh, pretty handedly. And then I lost to Alshon in the next match. Uh, had a couple game points in the second game. One of them, he actually hit the tip. Ball went behind me. Uh, so I was happy with that given that I don't play much singles, but I was kind of surprised that he wasn't better, to be honest. Um, and then I played mixed with Lacey. 
we are again just we're just not a very good pair. We lost to Rachel and Fetty, mm -hmm. and Rachel lit me up a couple times. She was talking so much shit from the first point. It was insane. Wow. Just right in my face, which I, I gave it back to her a lot, you know, but it, it's, it's, there's no animosity there. Like that's all, uh, I shouldn't even say for fun, but that was all competitive nature and it was good. And we had some chances. We lost the first game 11, eight, a five, one in game two. And then there was just an abundance of errors. Boom, 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 boom. And we lost 11, five in Dang. two minutes. Uh, so that sucked. And then the men's, I actually felt like I played great. Um, feel like I'm playing better and better, so that's fortunate for me. We had a match we shouldn't have lost. Zane, I don't think, would tell you that he played his best match, especially there was kind of like a mid, in the third, like a stretch in the middle of the game where he was a little, uh, a little sus. But uh, we lost to Loong and Alshon, beat Emric and De La Rosa the first round, and then lost to Alshon and Loong. We had 8-8-1 eight, eight, in the third, um, and just... You know, there, there, I played some poor points, could have made better decisions. So we lost 11 8 in the third. Um, and yeah, it was, it was very frustrating because I think, honestly, it's like a, an eight out of 10 victory if we just play normal. And you and played straight up? We played primarily straight up. And then, you know, as Zane started to struggle a little bit, we moved me to the left more and more just because he was having a, a slightly higher error count and I was having good success. The issue was that Christian was, his speed up off the bounce is very, very good on the forehand, but I was lighting him up in hands battles. Like he was barely ever coming close to winning one. So when he would light up at me, I was just countering and we were winning those points. So if you move me to the left, like maybe that doesn't exist as much. And, um, but we did end up moving me to the left. And I think the mistake we made is, you know, credit to Tyler. Like, I don't think he's very good, to be honest. I just don't think he is. But, but what he does well, he does very well. And the guy will make 75 dinks in a row. And if you don't take advantage of the high one, you're going to restart. The dink is going to start again. And so you can have like these really long, arduous points. And I just think we got too complacent with that pattern. Just bop, 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 bullshit. Because he just kind of has this like fluttery little dink. Nothing's on it. But, you know, I, I think we could have been a fair bit more aggressive on some of them. And that was a mistake we made. So, yeah, I mean, t look, Tyler competes well. He's got a pretty good forehand drive. And he, he, he fucking wins matches. He tries his ass off. And, and you have to beat the guy. Like, I'll give him that. You have to beat him. He's not dumb. He's not going to beat himself. So, um, yeah, I was pissed to lose. Really pissed. How was De La Rosa? It's been a while since you played him. Um, I mean, he's obviously very talented. He's got really, really fast hands. I don't think he's that dynamic. Like, around the line, he's not going to speed up a bunch off the bounce or make you feel unorthodox. Uh, so, me, for me, I think generally it's a good matchup because I favor my hands and everyone says he hits the crap out of the ball. He does. does he hit it hard? Fucking A hits the shit out of it. Yeah. He's got that uh, Pro Kenix black ace. And if he lines a forehand, it's very, very flat, two inches over the net. It's a bullet. Uh, and then, yeah, when he counters, it's very firm, partially because of the paddle and partially because he has a really, really loose hand. And it's just, it's a, it's a poppy, fast hand. But, uh, you know, I, I was lucky. I got the better of him almost every time in the hands battles in that match. Mm. So he, he, hold, he holds his paddle really loose? Is that what really you're saying? Really loose, and he actually holds it low. I'm a little bit like French, he does. Oh. And he's just very like, you know, obviously the guy's number one in the world of racquetball. He's very wristy. And so like if he catches it and you're going at him and he, he knows the spot. And he can snap he overhead. Off. It. Yes, yes. Very live arm. Uh, and, and he's a steady dinker. What about his server? His server's big too? Eh, not really. No? Not really. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so let me go through some of these people's here. You've got Samantha Parker down here. Oh, they're just notables from Houston. Yeah, she made final. I didn't watch her much. I think she beat Lacey in the semis. She was on our list of fourth round females to pick up. Yeah. Just because of her singles. Did prowess. she get picked up? I don't think so. Did okay. Samantha Parker get picked? I don't believe so. I don't recognize But she was on our list because she's a left side female and she's good at singles and she proved it even more so in this one. So Speaking mm. of, I think Frantova actually had a pretty good win. I don't know who she played with, but she beat Caitlin Christian and somebody. And I, I was watching a fair bit. They were playing next to us and she was playing well. She made a paddle change she just switched from the carbon to the pro xr and i think it gives her a fair bit more margin oh and luke said she was playing well at the u.s open today too in split age okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really? well i thought she was very well Graham i was like, I was like well, let's it. take it with a grain of salt she's playing split age at the u.s open hey, she's like, getting touches i like that yeah yeah she's playing a lot she's been playing for a long time too right she's not like new to the sport I mean, she's already played ML. She already played MLP. She's been playing for at least a year or but two. In, in watching, she looked like the best player on that court when I was watching. Was That's like, right, nice to hear. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go, go smash. Yeah. Let's go smash. Go smash. Let's take that split age gold home.
Yeah. Uh oh no. Let's see. All on all Yola gold. Yeah. I mean, wow. Yeah, Houston. Do you want to elaborate on that, Graham, or do you just want me to like yeah. every, fucking uncork so here? Is this this is what it means is that everyone that won gold at Houston eight Except PPA, for Rachel Robaca. Yeah, but she's part of a of Yola course, team. A Yola so team, yeah. every team had at least one or two Yolas plus singles for gold medals. Yeah. So if you want to get gold at PPA, you got to play with the Yola. All right. A Yola, uh, what do they call them? Version three. Well, here's all I'll say is, is we hit with them today. Like the question isn't how has Fetty made seven finals? The question is how hasn't he won all seven? Like Fetty is <laughs> an underachievement, bud. Uh, of course, I'm kidding. Like Fetty's nasty. But the only way I can describe this at the moment is it's like, it's like the new Yolas are like a metal bat and everybody else is playing with a wooden bat. They are so fucking gritty, so spinny, and the power potential is so high. It was like, one, I don't think it's good for the game, but if it's allowed, if you're not playing with that, then you're at a substantial disadvantage. Like the largest competitive advantage I've ever seen in sports is these paddles. I was hand battling with Travis and he got a little scared. He got oh, yeah. a little scared of me. Yeah, but it's fucking scary. Butter hands. Okay, but <laughs> I just want to know. The forehands that I was hitting from the back, how much faster were they than my normal? It's not even so much the speed. It's, it's, the, it's the dip. It's not the dip. It's the dip, but you know what it actually is? The it's the ki- No, it's the kick forward. Well, that's the spin. That's what Right, right. So it's not that it's dipping. It's when it hits, yeah. it runs at you. It, yeah. like, it's all of a sudden, it, like, it speeds up after the bounce. Yeah, even so the drips on- that I was hitting, I noticed when they were bouncing, they were just like... It's on you faster than your ex- every other paddle. So like the ball bounces, and then it's like already on top of you. It's wow. like the top spin is shooting forward really hard. Insane. But they have like five colors and five shapes for all the different, you know, their top pros. But we tried them all out today, and I have to give it to them. They're very nice paddles. I think the only complaint I would have is that it seemed like they were inconsistent in production from like paddle to paddle. Like one paddle was really gritty. One was pretty gritty. One was really gritty. They might gritty. be designed that way. Maybe. They might be. I mean, all I know is the one that we hit with, the Tyson one, the Magnus or whatever, was by far the grittiest. That would be my paddle of choice if I was a Yol player. It was, uh, you could tell that they were trying to copy the 002 in the shape, in the and weight. The feel. Yep, and everything. the feel. Felt like an 002, uh, but, but better with boy, spin. Like, I mean, you, it, it literally felt like I was playing with a tennis racket. That, that's how much grip it had. The rotation off the ball was like it was zing, zipping. I just, I had never seen anything like that. And, and again, I'm, I'm not with. advocating for this because I think it fucking sucks. I think the game shouldn't be that way. You should not be able to be on the back foot and hit forehand winners leaning backwards. But that's really like what this allows. Mm. And, and it's going to get frightening. I think it should be the all Yola tour and everyone on the tour has to play with these new Yolas. <laughs> Didn't we do, do this way, with the all Lux? Yeah, well, the but, all Lux tour, but, the all I mean, Yola everyone's kind of already playing with the Yola, so we'll just make it an all Yola tour and oh. see, who, see who the better player is. <laughs> I think is. the all Lux tour would be more exciting. That's true. The rallies would be longer. <laughs> yeah, they'd be better. Yeah. They'd be more crafty. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think, well, I think that's what most people would want is more interesting points. It's yeah. a good, it's a good game over here. Yes. Oh. Quality. <laughs> um, so Brandon French your new favorite player yes he, this, he got on the memes of pickleball which he deserves to be there because yes. he's hysterical he is hysterical and his game style wild. his game style is one of a kind tell us why though because it's hard to see on the stream sometimes but you tell, tell us why his game style is like, uh, unique so he holds the paddle with basically like three fingers on the paddle so super low <laughs> he's very very unconventional uh, all of his technique is unconventional. He will do things that you wouldn't expect just to annoy you. So like if he hits a reset, he could run forward, but he might just stand there and make you hit it again and go, eh. He likes eh, resetting. And reset. Really? And yeah. then like basically he takes just every dink out of the fuck air. with you. And he takes a lot of pride in his shit talk. And he is, it's so like most guys, they talk shit and they kind of get like hyphy. They get it going with the other guy. He's not, what, he's not bothered at all. Like his, his, I don't think his heart rate increases even 2%. He's just talking shit. He's having fun with it. He's fully in control of the dialogue. And, you know, he's he, like, I just practiced with him. The guy's out of his mind, trying crazy shit. <laughs> and getting wins. Nuts and getting wins and is really, really, really talented. Uh, he's but, an attorney by trades. That's probably helps with the shit talking and the, they're yeah. keeping the heart rate down while shit talking. Oh. Oh, I don't his know heart rate just constantly that. up. Maybe. I mean, he argues all day. That's what he does. I, I know, but like, usually you like have a vendetta against the guy. You might get a little. He didn't. If you saw the video where he plays Julian against Arnold. Julian and yeah. Tyler Loom, 
Like it's hysterical. The guy's it's shit wild. talking is so fucking good. Yeah, it's it is. Good. It's good. How, what would, what did he do before playing pickleball? Well, he's still an attorney. He's an attorney. He still is now. No, like I mean, like what sport? Golf. He was a golfer at IMG. Really? Yes. So that's why his family still lives in Bradenton, and he played golf. I didn't know that. So who? How does someone just come into pickleball? Is it holding the paddle that way? I don't know. <laughs> I think he played tennis. He must have played some tennis or something. Right. Um, Super odd. You know, especially considering he was at, at IMG. But I think he just thought, like, what's the loosest way I can hold this? Right. And the most relaxed I can be. Okay, I'll do this. <laughs> That's wild. So, oh, yeah. So the other week we had the Rays Pickleball Night, which was in St. Pete. It was pretty cool. Travis would have been there if he wasn't playing in Houston. But yeah, we had, you know, some local pros show up. But I think the reason I brought it up is they sold out of the tickets. That's awesome. 600. About to say, how was you, the turnout? Sounds like it was pretty damn good. 600 people used the pickleball code mm. to get tickets to the Rays game. Oh, yeah. shit. That's like That's a great. quarter of the stadium. <laughs> all right, all right. Calm yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. It just goes to show you that, you know, like they're going to double it next year, they said. Like they're yeah. going. Uh, genuinely, I mean, people people arrived with their own paddles from home. Oh, ready you to were play. there. So you tell me what it was like. I wasn't there. <laughs> Travis wasn't there. Was, you were there. It was great. Yeah. Uh, they did some exhibition stuff. They did some kind of like pros versus Joe stuff. Um, people got a paddle and engaged Trident with a Devil Rays paddle face. Very cool. The old school um, Rays logo. Yeah. The Devil yeah. Rays yep. logo. And uh, yeah, people loved it. People were like getting bussed in and just arriving in buses. It was wild. Yeah, people loved it. Were there a lot of new people introduced to pickleball or did everyone there seem like they already knew what um, it was? It's hard to say. I think that a lot of people probably, I, I imagine that a lot of those people had like played once or twice, but. Are they coming um, there as a souvenir or are they coming there to get a paddle they want to play with? I bet some of those people are going to play with that, those paddles. They're good paddles. Yeah. I They're mean, like $100 paddles. Yeah. And then customs to the Devil Rays right. is sick. Very cool, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, it was a really cool Huge thing. Huge success though. Yeah. And then they get the guy that owns Engage. Um, what's his name? Richard? Yeah, Robert, 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 Elliott. Robert Elliott. Yeah. He threw the first pitch, right? Yeah. That's and he awesome. threw a good pitch too. Did he? Yeah. It wasn't a full wind up. He right. did the kind of like the toss, but it was, a, it had a nice trajectory yeah. and it landed j probably just high of a strike, but yeah. pretty solid. Better Beauty. than a Bright's free throw. Yes. Way better than Anna Bright's free throw. That was, <laughs> yeah, not, not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> All right. So upcoming events, we've got LA. Travis, is that next? Yeah. I leave for LA on Wednesday morning. Got Zane again. It's at Los Cab. At Los Cab. Do you where, like that facility? I mean, I lived there for years. My dad has a but condo. What there. about the facility? The facility now is fucking awesome. Oh, it's sick. It's insane. That's I mean, cool. it's not Lots like of courts, right? Tons of courts. They're um, all outdoor? Yes. I wouldn't say it's like anything bougie by any means because it was literally just like empty tennis courts prior. But that's where we had like our junior sectionals every year uh, as a tennis player in Southern California. So that like, that was a prestigious place mm. to me as a kid. So now to see it converted to where it's all pickleball. And, and the thing I want to say is like, it was a ghost town for a while. Like when I lived there, I would walk out fucking 40 courts just empty. And now it's packed. It's fucking packed. Like the courts are literally full all the time. Damn. And as far as I know, they're adding more and more and more. Is that home? That's home of a lot of pros, right? I know the Brashas, they train out of there. Yeah, I think their dad's like the head pro there. Um, and yes, the Brashas are there. And I think there's a lot of players who come through there, there to practice, like Eric Pele, Pele. I know that Jaume was there for a fair bit. Um, Connor trains there sometimes, Garnett. I think that there's quite a few. Probably Lacey. Uh, yeah, maybe Hayden, Jesse. Hayden probably goes there from time to time. Callen, because it's all kind of within range with maybe an hour of San Diego for those guys. So do the do uh do like famous LA Hollywood stars go play there? I, I can't tell you that one. Mm. So I think they you, might go somewhere more bougie. Who who are you playing with on this this one? Zane Zane and Men's and Lacey and Mixed. Okay, got it. And then still playing singles, but we'll see. Uh, do you have a lot of your partners already scheduled out? Like, ahead yeah, I have, of time? Almost, I have almost everything booked. Almost now. everyone. Okay. When do you play with Augie G again? Augie starts uh, after Atlanta. I think he's going to do good in in LA. You and Zane. I think we will too. I think we're like right on the cusp of yeah. And and we have really good communication after the match, like errors we made, things we did wrong, how I could have communicated better, how he could have communicated better. I, I like think, that. And I think I am, you know, the biggest culprit of that. Like I, I think I say something, and I just think it's it's basically done. It's conveyed, it's communicated, and there maybe needs to be more dialogue. Oh, there. yeah, you're the king of that. Thank you, Graham. Um, yeah, so good, good communication. How was the venue in Houston? Um, was the weather, okay. did you have a good, like, no, no wind, no storming? It was finally like a 
decent experience, or uh, was still, it bad conditions? It, it, again? It, it wasn't terrible, but it was still pretty gusty. Damn. You know, I mean, I, I I hope that one day professional pickleball is all indoors. I just still think it's a sport that's meant to be play in, played indoors uh, at a high level because the wind just re wreaks havoc on the ball, man. The ball. It's crazy when it, it is going to be windy. indoor. It is going to be indoor. I know. I Arizona Drive is building a facility. I, I think, think the LA Mad Drops building a facility. I think eventually we we'll are be. Utah. Yes. I mean, there's five right there alone. Makes sense. So the, the quality Orlando. of play just drops too much. Yeah. You think? So you don't think there'll be any outdoor in like five years time? You no, think? there will still be outdoor. People love that. You know, like the U.S. Open is never going to go indoors. Yeah. So that you can't. Mm. Not a facility big enough, but. I think there's gonna be a lot more like PPAs that, and MLPs that are gonna take place indoors in the next two years, for yeah. sure. Yes. A lot of lifetimes getting courts indoors. Yes. Speaking yeah. of US Open, that's happening right now. Who actually is behind the US Open? Is it USA Pickleball? No, it's, it's a group. They just bought it. The right. majority share owner just bought it. I don't know. I forget who the group is. There's some association with like the Red Sox or something like that. <laughs> It's, okay. a gr it's a group oh, okay. that That's bought it in the last year, year and a half. They yeah. paid for it, quite a bit of money. Yeah. And then they expanded it. They're trying to expand it into baseball stadiums. Oh. But I would say, and I think Franklin's a part of that group. Franklin Pickleball is a okay. part of that, that buying group. But no, it's, a, it's an outfit that is trying to make the U.S. Yeah. Open a business. Um, what, what do pros think about it? Like, it, I think it had a, a lot more press, I feel like, a couple of years ago than it does maybe now or is it well that's because ppa doesn't allow their players to right. play in it that destroyed it and it did destroy it it just changed the dynamic of sure. the, of the u.s open now right. it's a lot of app players right yep uh, and and a lot of focus on amateur which it has always been mm. how did anna lee and lee get in this year then it's got a special and she, no, she, you're allowed to play now you're allowed to but it's just for a while, like last year, you weren't allowed to play oh, if you okay. signed a PPA contract. This year, you're allowed to play, but the requirement is so high for so many players, they're just not going to play it. You know, it's not, it doesn't essentially count for anything. So okay. a lot of players are going to avoid it. The Got schedule, it. their schedules are already so packed, like yours, that right. you don't want to no, tap no, no, no. on another event. I can't, event, I can't, like I can't even US consider Open. that. But like, Anna, they're right there. First yeah. off, they're right around the corner. They, right. You know, the Georgia Five are playing in it. Yeah, and she's not playing LA, so she's like, all right, I'll play a couple matches here. Right. And it's a, it. it's a nice, it's a pickleball party. Like they say, it's a nice event. They do a great job. It's fun. Tons cool of center fans. Court. Yeah. Like it's a, it's a great event. Yeah. Okay. It's just, um, it's not prioritized for some of us. Got it. Okay. Makes sense. So you, so do you, would, would you, have you played in it before? I played it once. Oh, you have to? I have to. Yeah. I played in it twice. Oh, how did you do? I played it as a four or five years ago. I think we did all right. Three and two or something. And then... I don't know, average. Nothing, yeah. nothing spectacular. There's good players there. Yeah, Everyone okay. wants to win a U.S. Open. Okay, and it's huge. It. The draws Well, that's kind of why I was wondering. It's like, it's like the U.S. Open has For a For amateurs, it's still and... big. Okay, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Like, you see the courts tonight, they're half full. I have a feeling half our players are down in... Yeah, it's very possible. ...are down at the U.S. Open right now playing. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I think the Georgia Five are going to take a lot of wins out of that. <laughs> yeah, I think they're going to win every Like, you know, JW's Although... playing with Anna Lee. Oh, really? How cool is that's that? That's crazy. That's a cool Whoa, mixed match. Oh, that's wild. And how about Jack Foster winning singles? I didn't see that. Yeah, Jack Foster the beat overall? JW and then he beat... Uh, I don't think JW is into... Is he in, not into singles anymore? Or is he? Know. But he lost. And hey, wow. he beat Hayworth, Hayworth in the final. Jack uh, Foster? Jack Foster, your Florida native. Go Gators. Let's go Gators. Him he and Ben the Shelton, the new number one U.S. tennis player. Did you know that? I did know that, Graham, but thank you. I'm, I'm happy for your knowledge. He's ranked 14th overall in the, in the tour. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um so travis you're doing a i saw you're doing a clinic for kids i am junior clinic yeah <laughs> no, i like that uh that was kind of like the kids love the, travis i'm fucking great with kids <laughs> <laughs> so yeah basically i'm doing quite a few of the ppa junior clinics i'm anxious to do them actually i'm excited because i think the kids are going to be nasty uh, you're going to kind of see this little How old generation. are these juniors? What's the I no, age limit? I think limit? it's a wide gap. I think it's probably 10 to maybe 8 Oh, to they 15. don't get, they're not that young? No, not young. It's not like little kids. It's I mean, eight's teenagers. pretty fucking young. Yeah, I think it's a lot of teenagers. But we'll see. I, I, I don't exactly know. You know they're going to love you. I mean, I they're mean They're going to fucking love me. Yeah, you're like a kid. I mean, yeah, I am. I'm a large child. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll make it fun are for you them. Gonna, are you going to like hit them and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like hand battles, just body bag Dude, them? let me tell you, I did this one kids clinic in Vegas at the end of the year, the year last year. Kids fucking love me. Okay? <laughs> and the one girl was like, do you make money in this? I was like, yeah. She's like, how do I make money? I was like, you get better. Like, I don't want to practice though. I was like, then you're not going to get better. And anyway, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Very good dialogue with these little children. I think they feel, I generally make them feel comfortable. You need help with that. Let me know. No, you are not who I would call. You're awful. <laughs> yeah. You're awful. Hey, kid. I would never put hey, you kid. in a kid's clinic. Move to their side. <laughs> you don't the, know how to manage children. Back around. of the rack. That's so true. That's so, so funny. True. <laughs> so true. Um, that's awesome. These kids are not messing around, though. I've been seeing some videos of these oh, juniors that's playing. The cool and, part is like seeing that they don't have tennis technique. Like, what technique do they have? What is maybe becoming conventional, or is there even conventional? Yeah. Uh, because obviously, in five years, the best players are not going to be ex tennis players. They're going to be these kids who have been playing pickleball for eight years. Right. Those are going to be the best players in the world. Yeah. So that'll be really cool to see, like, what grips do they use? Mm -hmm. um, what shots are they hitting? And I, I guarantee you, I'm, I'm going to look at some shit they're doing and be like, Damn, I gotta add that. Um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so you have to I, go out early for that, like a day early or something. You yeah, stay it's, a day Wednesday, late? it's Wednesday afternoon. Gotcha. It'll nice. be cool. I'm excited about it. That's neat, and it's in your hometown, which makes it fun too. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, that's what we had. Hey, uh, thanks for watching or listening to Back of the Rack. Are, we, cha still fucking are sucks. we changing the name to Back of the Rack for next episode or this episode? We could end it with the new name. Started with the old one and finished with the new one. Luke still loves balls. <laughs> I still love that's gonna be my outro I still love balls <laughs> but I also love balls <laughs> back of the rack so we're changing it to back of the rack for what next episode yeah let's do it let's let's let's, let's commit let's commit I think, I think back of the rack is the right play why All does right. our group have a commitment phobia we need to commit I do have very yeah, severe same. phobia you do so. I mean I'm pretty sure with both All divorced All three like, of us yeah. <laughs> I've been that's destroyed I've been destroyed in my life by trust <laughs> yeah. the only person I trust is you and that's probably that's a mistake sad. That's a big mistake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got a new best friend now. And it's exactly. just, yeah, He's yeah, already yeah. just throwing me under the bus. <laughs> I don't even want to get into the team things. <laughs> Should have seen them. All right. Well, time to get to the back of the rack. All right. Let's go. Lost back of the rack. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Tennis still fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah.